We took a trip on the Trans-Siberian Railroad from Moscow to Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, May 22nd to June 7th, 2018. The tour was organized by the Travel All Russia Firebird Tour Group. The first stop after leaving Moscow on the Trans-Siberian Railroad was Kazan, where we spent two days, May 25th and 26th. Videos of the other areas we visited will be uploaded to our Conscience Films YouTube site as we produce them. Anna Gilman was our tour guide charged with making everything go smoothly. At each stop, we were met by a very knowledgeable local guide who showed us the highlights. This video was produced from pictures taken by Abe and video taken by me. The cameras were handheld. Tripods were never used. The city of Kazan is over a thousand years old and is the capital of the Republic of Tatarstan, a republic in the Russian Federation. Kazan is some 815 kilometers or 506 miles east of Moscow and lies at the confluence of the Volga and Kazanka rivers. The population of Kazan is approximately 1.3 million. It is one of the largest economic, political, scientific, educational, cultural, and sports centers in the Russian Federation. It has 18 universities. There are approximately 44,000 students enrolled at the Kazan Federal University alone. The predominant populations are Muslim and Christian, but at the same time, there's a Catholic cathedral, as well as synagogues, Lutheran churches, and two so-called Old Believers churches. All in all, there are 173 nations and nationalities living in peace and collaboration in Tatarstan. It is a center of tolerance toward all religions. Vladimir Lenin came to Kazan at the age of 17 and entered the law faculty of Kazan Imperial University. After studying for three months, he was expelled from the university for his participation in a strike. The city's mascot is Zalant the Dragon, who, legend has it, keeps hate away from the region. This dragon can be seen throughout the city in statue form and flying on flagpoles on city banners. So we've just arrived in Kazan. It's 8 a.m. This is the front of the Kazan train station. We walked across the street from the station to the Ramada Hotel, where we stayed while in Kazan. We were very fortunate to have Milia Yusha Yumatova, whom we called Mila, as our guide. She begins our tour by showing us the Kazan Kremlin, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and home to the Qual Sharif Mosque, built in 2005, and the Annunciation Cathedral, which is Orthodox, built in the late 16th century. Ninety-five. it is based on the private collection of uh, Lihachov, and it is very, very interesting. Maybe if you have a time, you can visit it. But and opposite the building is the building of the municipality. The mayor of Kazan, Ilsur Mietchen, it has his he has his office over there. And before getting into Kremlin, we can see the sign of UNESCO above the arch uh, that is written. And in, uh, Kremlin, Kazan Kremlin was included in 2000 into UNESCO list. So we can come closer to the Soviet Tower and uh, stop over there. Musa Jali is a Tatar national poet, the hero of the U USSR. And uh, Kazan is located on the junction of two rivers, uh, Volga, and from here, from this point, we can see that river at the distance 
that is Volga River, uh, the longest river in Russia, three, so more than 3,600 kilometers, coming from the north to the south. And Kazan is located on the junction of Volga and Kazanka River. And it was on the junction uh, on, on the Great Silk Road. Because, because of this great trade activity, that was the center of trade. And uh, all kind of caravans coming by the river, they were at the bottom of the walls of Kazan Kremlin. But formation of Kazan began at the 6th, 7th centuries. It was just like a northern fortress of the Volga Bulgaria state. Bulgar, the city Bulgar, uh, is located in 200 kilometers downstream the Volga, south, yes, from Kazan. And Kazan was just a northern fortress, small fortress. And the city was within the boundaries of Kremlin. But today we will get inside the Kremlin and we will see all kind of the buildings beginning from the 16th century. And through Sevier Tower uh, we can get in. But just you can pay attention that all the walls are made of the natural stone, milestone. And great milestone deposits are located on the right bank of Volga River. Natural stone, these are the stones they were brought for the construction of the walls and of the towers. So we are on the way to Kremlin. The Kremlin now, and in order to get the idea, so you've been to Moscow and you've been to Kremlin. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, people ask why there is Kremlin in Moscow everywhere. Kremlin, factually, Kremlin is translated like a fortress, and the city was developing inside this fortress. And uh, so, if you compare the total area of Moscow Kremlin, it is 28 hectares. In Kazan, it is 13, just two times smaller. And uh, the total length of the uh, the fortress itself 1800 meters initially there were 13 towers today eight of them are preserved so uh, we get in we got in uh, through Sevier tower today we will visit the largest mosque Ku Sharif it's a new mosque the largest mosque in our Republic and we will get into the Annunciation Cathedral, the active, uh, the acting Russian Orthodox Church, and we will see the symbol of Kazan, the Leaning Tower, Suyum Beki Tower, and afterwards we will get, we will live through uh, uh, Stanitska Secret Tower of the Kremlin. So uh, within today, uh, inside Kremlin, there are mosque, cathedral, but also museums. The, number, the great number of museums and picture galleries, as well as the offices, uh, the office of the president of the Republic of Tatarstan, the official office of the president. But uh, so initially, when I told it, it was just a fortress, the northern fortress uh, of the Volga Bulgaria. Uh, but the boundaries, the territory of the present Kremlin, it was related uh, to the 16th century. In 1552, uh, Kazan was conquered by the uh, Russian Tsar Ivan the Terrible, Ivan the Fourth. Uh, his idea was uh, to conquer Kazan because he needed for the expansion of the young state to the east and to the south. And also he had an idea to bring here the Christianity because uh, beginning from the 922, the beginning of the 10th century, the religion was here Islam. Islam was the official religion of Volga Bulgaria. In it was Islam was accepted on the 21st of May 922, because one year before uh, 922, uh, there was the mission coming from Baghdad. And for one year they were traveling and they came to Bulgar. 
they were accepted by Bulgar Khan Almish, and he told that uh, Bulgar people are ready to accept Islam as the state religious. And beginning from that time till the mid of 16th century, Islam was the main religion. Uh, and also after the conquering of Kazan, uh, before conquering Kazan, there were several attempts. And after conquering, it happened in October 1552, uh, uh, the monastery was, uh, in order to expand the Christianity, the monastery was erected here, was established. And now we can get over there, so inside uh, the walls uh, and uh, on the territory of the monastery. Uh, this monastery was very rich and uh, it was first class so because of a lot of lands around Kazan a lot of villages they belonged uh, to this monastery but we can see only the remaining parts that left uh, because uh, the main building and the main church was uh, exploded demolished in 1920s uh, so we can call it just after the revolution uh, you know all kind of mosques churches either they were destroyed or just closed the only thing that left from this uh, spas preobrazhensky monastery the monastery just the monk house the monks building the houses for the monks uh, and uh, today it is being used by the kremlin because inside the kremlin there is the very huge archaeological museum uh, that is the authorities the administration but from here you can see uh, the towers uh, made of natural stone and very nice panorama of the Volga river and just uh, on the way to the mosque we can make uh, several stops over there of snakes and snake in tatar language is jilan and uh, when they asked uh, for the wise person how to get rid of them he put he told that you have to put the dry hay and just put the fire on all the in in spring all the snakes disappeared and the huge dragon zilan took up from the top of the hill and now he is in the lakes of kaban over there we will go later in this lake of kaban there are treasures of kazan khan khan who was at the top of Kazan Hanid, and this is the Dragon Zealand. Uh, the name of the mosque is Kul Sharif. Uh, Kul Sharif uh, was the person uh, who was the Imam of the Han Palace Mosque in 1552. Till the last moment of his life, he was defending uh, Kazan, uh, the Han Mosque, but he, wa he died. And in 1994, uh, there was a decree signed by the president of Tatarstan, uh, Minsimir Shaimiev, and uh, it was decided to construct a new mosque. Uh, this mosque, uh, and it, it, at that time, it was decided to give the name of Kul Sharif to this mosque. Uh, the mosque was constructed, the construction period between 1995 till 2005, 10 years. And at the same time, there was a reconstruction inside the uh, Russian Orthodox Church. And in the central hall, uh, there is the miniature of the mosque, Kul Sharif Mosque. Uh, it is the piece of art, which is the jewelry art, made of silver. And uh, it is arranged according to the technology known from Bulgar time. Bulgar, they were very good in uh, jewelry. And from two grams of silver or gold, they could stretch up to two kilometers of thread. Then they were making curling and put some grains. Uh, for example, uh, this is just the miniature of the mosque. Uh, it is decorated with the precious stones, but also 
uh, it is produced by the local company or mass holder. Uh, but generally, inside the mosque, there are no pictures of the animals, of the human beings, but just flowers. You can see the flowers, uh, geometrical ornaments, just like on the ceiling. And sitting in that cabin, uh, his position is Hafiz. Hafiz is the person who knows Quran uh, by heart. And they're making a reciting of Quran uh, 24 hours, 7 days a week, so permanently. Uh, it was arranged uh, 4 years ago, just uh, to give the blessing to the whole Republic, to the whole Russia, everything. Uh, and just uh, he stops only he he's reading in Arabic in Arabic yes because uh, Hafiz uh, they know Quran by heart in and it is in Arabic and you can see uh, on the left side uh, that is Kaaba yes Mecca uh, annually there is the pilgrimage Hajj to Mecca uh, if uh, this is the mosque Majid Al Haram located in Mecca so it is the sacred place for the older Muslims. But uh, the way Bulgar, the city Bulgar looked, we can see it on the right side. Uh, Bulgar, uh, just according to the opinion of this uh, 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 creator, uh, it, it could be like this at the beginning of the 10th century when Islam was adopted in 922. There was the food from four parts, special part for the just for gathering, the cloak room, and there was the washing room, special cabins. But you know that the system of uh, floor heating, uh, they arranged the floor heating by the fume pipes. Uh, there was special department for the fuel preparation, as well as for the hot water supply, as well as the sewage system. Up in the middle, on the green platform, you can see Al-Ikhlas, written in Arabic, one of the main surahs, Al-Ikhlas, and the nice chandelier coming down. The chandelier is made of Bahamian crystal, and it was the present of the Czech Republic to the Kul Sharif, because the Czech coin was found the, uh, the, the, the here, yes, uh, and uh, the Czech people are very thankful for them. So the construction of the mosque was done arranged 10 years, and the donations, the contributions made by the local companies, a lot of sponsors, and all of their names are written here, not of all of their names, because it's, there are huge books with the names, with the in, names of the individuals, written in over there. Be seated while making praying. Uh, that is allowed, that is allowed. And uh, just for special occasions, they're making a live broadcasting from the ceremonies from the mosque. And there is a small balcony, just that they install uh, some cameras over there.
and the flag of Tatarstan, green, white, and red. And you know that uh, in uh, in Kazan, the city public transport is arranged like this. We have buses. The buses are red color. We have trolley buses. They are green color, and taxi is white. So the idea of the tri uh, three colors of Tatarstan flag. And uh, the building uh, itself, there is the office of the first president of Tatarstan, Mintsimir Shaimiev. Uh, in 2010, he resigned, uh, and uh, nowadays he is the advisor to the president, but he is at the head of the mine, there is the car coming. Could you do a little bit uh, And this fund is taking care of the restoration in Bulgar and the island of Sviyarsk. So tomorrow we will go to the spheres and we will see the results of this activity. Now we are going ahead, just going to the Annunciation Cathedral. The decline of the, the tower is leaning. Uh, the tower made of red brick on the left side, the name of the tower is Suyum Bike. Suyum Bike uh, is the name of the wife of Kazan Han. And there is a very nice legend that because of the beauty and the wisdom of Suyum Bike, Ivan the Terrible made the proposal to marry him. But she loved her, uh, his, his, her wife, uh, Safagiri, and she put very strict condition, very tough condition. And later he was baptized. He was renamed to Alexander, and in 1566 he died. Just mind the car, uh, and uh, he was buried together with the tomb, tomb of Ivan the Terrible in Moscow. Kremlin. But before getting to the cathedral, we will go to the altar part to see the altar part of the city. We are just uh, in the middle of a small garden and uh, in front of us there is the monument and it is written to the architects of Kazan Kremlin. It's, uh, this monument is a new one. It was established uh, in 2003 and there is a symbolical two figures. Uh, the, uh, one of them is sitting and his manuscript is open and we can see uh, the picture of Spaska, the Savior Tower, that we got into the Kremlin. The person who stands, his uh, manuscript is rolled up. It, it, we cannot see anything what is written over there. It symbolizes that we cannot see any kind of building made by the Tatar architects before conquering Kazan. It means after conquering Kazan, all the buildings, all the mosques, everything was completely destroyed. And uh, uh, just we can see that small stones, this was the boundary of uh, uh, Han territory, of Khan Palace territory, dated the 15th century. And uh, just in the middle, uh, you can see the Annunciation Cathedral. And uh, just on this very place, in three days, according to the instruction of uh, Russian Tsar, the small church was erected. And later, 10 years later, the Russian architects, Postnik Barma, Ivan Sherey, they were invited specially, and under their supervision, the cathedral was erected. And before getting inside, we can see the altar part, and then we'll get inside. Going into the cathedral. because of the fact that it was decided to arrange keeping of the documents, the archives of the Tatarstan. Uh, till 1991, it was just the storage of the documents. 
of course, no paintings, no icons, iconostasis, nothing were preserved, nothing was preserved. And uh, when in 1995, they started the renovation and the period of renovation was for 10 years. And in the year of 2005, the year of millennium of Kazan, it was open to public and it is an active church. So coming back to the event of the appearance of Virgin Mary, if we look up and in the right corner, a girl in the red dress, that is the girl, and she indicates the place where to dig. Then if we transfer here, here, you can see the appearance of the icon. They take it from the ground, the icon. And then there is the first blessing, just in front of the icon. And the fact of the eyesight recovery, when two blind persons standing on their knees, they are asking for the eyesight recovery, and the miracle happens. When the number of the miracles happened more than 10, they reported to the uh, Ivan the Terrible, to the Tsar, and he instructed to construct that monastery. And the construction that we have seen over there, yeah, yeah. yes, uh, that was the monastery uh, till 1930. In 1930, it was exploded. And in that building, the newly, that the original icon was kept. You know that in different parts of Russia and in different cities of the world, there are uh, Russian Orthodox Church cathedrals named after Kazan, for example, in many countries. And there are no hands of the Virgin Mary in the, in the icon itself. It is a very, very strange one, because normally she indicates the, the direction with her hand, yes. And uh, today, uh, in that monastery, we can see the copy of the icon that was given in 2005 by John Paul II, just a few years before his death, the icon that he kept for 11 years in his private chamber in Vatican, uh, he, came, he gave back to Kazan. Initially, this building was uh, uh, constructed according to the order of Russian Tsar Nikolai I, in like a temporary residence for his visit of the Russian Tsar to Kazan. And uh, here, uh, Rustem Minikhanov, he accepts the official delegations, just foreign delegations, maybe next time when you come as official delegation, you can go to the reception of president here. They sent to the laboratory analysis to Moscow and they proved to be the bones of two Han of Kazan. It means that is the cemetery of Kazan Han. But normally the head of Kazan throne, uh, they, the person who, who is the descendant from Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan. And uh, it was decided not to continue any excavations and they just arranged this kind of uh, glass uh, roofing over it and they just for demonstration only. And uh, uh, through that tower on the top we can see the symbol of UNESCO. We're getting out from the Kremlin now. So they never decided if that was Genghis Khan. It is not. decided. It, it is, is a, it no, no, not not Genghis Khan. Material in the center. For it is the, the it is the cemetery, mm -hmm. and uh, just some part is open, but further they didn't continue the excavations. Okay, so just we can go down. These are just general views as we leave 
the Kazan Kremlin. The puppet theater dates from 1934 and is one of the oldest puppet theaters in Russia. It was originally bilingual, Tartar and Russian, and was housed in a small church. The theater moved to this new building in 2012. An art school and actress studio is also located in the building. Near the puppet theater is Tugan Evelum, a traditional Tartar village constructed in 2005, the thousandth year anniversary of the city of Kazan. This village includes traditional Tartar log houses, restaurants, and a mosque. There is also an adventure park, touching zoo, teddy bear house, and toy museum for children. We are now walking through the old section of Kazan. This was the first mosque built in Kazan under Russian rule after several decades of Muslim persecution in Imperial Russia. It was built between 1766 and 1770 under Catherine the Great's authority and from donations given by the citizens. It is the oldest practicing mosque in Tatarstan and was the only mosque in Kazan that escaped closure during the Soviet period. The mosque was built in traditions of Tatar medieval architecture combined with provincial Baroque style and represents a typical Tatar mosque. Do you remember I showed you the house of Shigabudin Manjani and that is his portrait and exactly the same portrait are being, is being presented in London in the National Museum of London and uh, he was a philosopher and he was imam of this mosque for 30 years and uh, so because of the ramadan uh, after the sunset they also arranges this kind of iftar is over there and we will get over there because in this part it was constructed a little bit later mm -hmm. uh, uh, the silk show the vest the long sleeve dress and this leather boots with a handmade ornament. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we can go upstairs to the man part. And these rocks, just this is just a small piece for the individual. It's a show maker. It's a show, it shows maker. So you stand here, you can make some banning, uh, just knee, and uh, Special decision. Uh, it is arranged five times a day. The education, uh, Islamic education here, the religious education. Regarding the Islamic education, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, those who would like to get the religious education, they could go to the Arab countries, to Egypt, let's say to Turkey. But when they were back, their knowledge it was quite different from the 
the typical knowledge of Islam that was in 2014 there was the decree of President Minifana and they started to construct Bulgar Islamic Academy that is the highest institution for the religious institution and that's why all our Imams are being prepared our, on our, from our uh, area so and uh, we can see that uh, this one is just uh, the building of the 18th century how it was decorated at the time and it is preserved so all these poles are for men, pray for men Just to, right now we are in the front of the temple of all confessions. Uh, so that was his idea, just under one roof to create the place that all kind of cultures, all religions, they can come together and they can have cultural events like the picture galleries, the concerts, the theaters, performances, etc. Now the railways that you came from Moscow by the railway and when you come to Mos from Moscow, it, just, it is on the right side and you can see the panorama of Volga, that is Volga River and the right bank of the Volga River that we have seen yesterday from Kremlin uh, that was the area that I have sh shown you so and from here from this place uh, we can see the minarets of the mosques Catholic Cathedral uh, the Belfry that is the Buddha house the construction is going on even uh, in 2013 Ildar Hanov died uh, his supporters, his students, they continue to make the construction and inside there is some part like a church, Russian Orthodox Church some part is just like Catholic Cathedral because of the dome there is a very nice uh, window glazing inside and uh, but today we won't get in uh, we can walk around and then be back to the bus, okay? Okay, let's make it like this. Uh, so it started from the 1980s at the end of 1980s but still it is considered uh, the construction is not completed it's going on This may be Zoroastrian. On the right, red and black color, it is the name is Kiss. Like the Kiss. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, you can see it just this is the railway that you came by train along yeah. this railway from Moscow. Just it is on the way, and because of the uh, limited area, just everything is arranged on the place of his native house where his parents live, and that's why uh, it cannot be expanded. Uh, the creator Ildar Hanov, uh, he was the artist and there are very the great number of the canvas the pictures made by him and they are being exposed inside also during the and after his death uh, all these that beca became the property of his brother 
Ilgis Hanov. Ilgis Hanov, he is the uh, making the icons. He is also practicing yoga, and sometimes they arrange here the lessons of uh, yoga, just like master classes, some kind of activities. These are a few views along the road as we travel to the island of Serviashka. The Volga River. It's 14 kilometers. And the place uh, where Volga and Kama River joins, uh, that is 14. Shivayashk became an island in 1957 when a power station was built and the area was flooded. Although it is referred to as an island, it is actually a peninsula since a road connects it to the mainland. It is located at the confluence of the Volga and Svyaga rivers. Children can be heard playing on a piano in the first few scenes. Uh, and then we get to the central part. So along the boundaries, so that was the structure of the fortress. And this part, this part, it was just the, for the different types of the tradesmen, craftsmen. They were living in the lower part of the city. Shivyashk is 58 kilometers or 36 miles from Kazan and was developed and occupied by Ivan the Terrible in the 16th century as a military base for the conquest of Kazan. It was the first Christian settlement in the region. There are 37 cultural monuments on the island, including two monasteries and seven churches. Assumption Church. We are just facing, we are just in front of this Assumption Church. You can pay attention to the walls. They are made of natural stone, milestone deposits that are located at the right bank of the Volga River. After the 1917 revolution, Sviazhk became one of the first places to suffer Soviet political repression. Its monasteries were abolished and transformed into transit prisons and concentration camps where many inmates were shot. Later it was used as a psychiatric hospital. Because of its location, the prison has been considered by some to be comparable to the former U.S. prison of Alcatraz in San Francisco. It was reconstructed and opened as a museum in 2011. This is a wall memorial in memory of those who died in the prisons. In 2017, this Assumption Cathedral and Monastery were added to the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It was the place uh, for the uh, different kind of services like the courts, or like a, like a, just the normal ser services of the clergy. But uh, uh, that was the place also for the prison. And uh, in, inside there is the yard and uh, this prison, it was like a transit because all the victims, uh, the prisoners, they were brought here and afterwards they were sent to the place of their destinations. At the same time, uh, they are making the, uh, nowadays, the performances of the uh, museum. Uh, it is being, it is very rich, the exhibits, because they find all kind of findings during the archaeological excavations. Uh, and they arrange also temporary exhibitions over there. And uh, we can go ahead. So the huge dome, uh, that is the God Mother, the all the sorrows joy, it is very complicated name. Uh, that was the, constructed in 1906, the, made of red brick with a silver dome. Uh, that is the largest 
structure on the island, neo-Byzantine style, and it was the latest uh, architectural construction made by the monastery. So these are the fans of the monastery when the first monks were ca came here. But after the reforms ma made uh, by Catherine the Great, the, when the monasteries, they were, there was the secularization. So it means that all the lands, all the areas, they were deprived from the monastery, they were taken off. The monks, they went to Moscow and all the territory was for female monastery, from nunnery. In 1551, the first monastery, Holy Trinity Monastery, was founded on the island. Monks were brought to the island from Holy Trinity and St. Sergius monasteries near Moscow. Catherine II closed it down in 1764. The Holy Trinity Church was the first Christian church built on the island and was built in one day in 1551 from Uglish timber. No nails were used. Legend has it that Ivan the Terrible prayed at Holy Trinity before his final assault on Kazan in 1552. This church is a good example of wooden church architecture. There's only one wooden church older than this one in all of Russia, the 1390 St. Lazarus Church in the Mora Monastery. Trinity Church was remodeled in the 19th century with a new iron sheet roof. Fortunately, the church's interior has survived with few changes since it was built in the 16th century. So the building, uh, the church in front of us, uh, it is called um, All the Sorrows, God Mother, All the Sorrows Joy. It means that all the people who are in sorrow, for them is the protector, is the Virgin Mary. But uh, the cathedral itself, the church itself, was constructed in 1906. And uh, the head of the nunnery up here, she just allocated 14,000 rubles. At that time, that was a huge amount of money. Uh, it is like Hagia Sophia in the storm. Uh, But it was not ruined. Uh, it was kept. It was used like a, uh, keeping for the vegetables of some some technical uh, issues. Of course, no icons. Nothing was preserved. And the renovation began in 2013. Uh, there was the great financing from Sberbank, the Russian bank, and we can get inside and we can see the interior. Okay, we can go ahead.
Не, ну проедешь, если в полтора. Или там. There were a lot of artists and they had dachas on the island and because of the very nice panoramic view, the picturesque landscapes, they were living here on the island and the building, the house on the right side, it is the picture gallery. Oh, yeah. Just to bear one fact that there is no cemetery on the island. All the citizens of the island are being buried just on the opposite bank. And in the center you can see some part, some small trees. That is the cemetery for the citizens. Over there you can see the grass roof. It's a new museum. It will be open this year in October autumn this year and it will be the demonstration of the real wooden houses that were discovered in the wet clay under the water and they will be exposed in that museum mm. the wooden houses uh, I just mentioned that, that there is the school and only 35 children attending this school so the building of the school is on the left two storied red, uh, red made of red brick and the kindergarten on the ground floor and uh, uh, I think now uh, before leaving from the island I will call the our driver and I try I think that he will pick us up from that square and just we can drop for the place of the historical reconstruction it is called it is called lazy market linear with our job and you can feel the atmosphere just some souvenirs some uh, tea and then we get on the bus and go for lunch. We drove back to Kazan, had lunch, and then visited a tea room and museum to learn about Chuk Chuk, a sweet, sticky national tartar and Bashkir dessert frequently made for special occasions like weddings. Video was not allowed during the Chuk Chuk demonstration. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lisa. And uh, where are you from? Uh, Small Australia. Yeah. Australia. And US and Israel. 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 US. US. Australia. Australia. Mm -hmm. US. Russia. US. Russia. US. From St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. Well, amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you can take a picture, but video is forbidden. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, it was considered to announce how many eggs was used to prepare chuck chuck. At four the next morning, we walked across the street from the hotel to the Kazan train station and boarded the train for our journey to El Katrenberg. We're leaving Kazan this morning, and it's around 4.30. This is the 27th of May. We're leaving Kazan, where we've been for two days. Checking the passports. Let's 
It's about 7.30. Abraham's snoozing. <laughs> These are a few general views of the landscape as we travel eastward on the train to Ekaterinburg. We observe that most homes have a vegetable garden. We also observe wild dandelions growing everywhere. Abe pointed out that during World War II, the Soviet Union produced rubber from dandelions. 